Happy Black Friday, everyone. There are no deals on today's show. I'm Mike F. Dave, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple leaks, news, and rumors every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring me bell. And yes, as I mentioned, uh, there are no deals on today's show. I know that if you go to any Apple news website uh, over this week, you won't find news, you'll just find a lot of links to things on Amazon. So we're not doing that, we're just answering your questions today. This uh, episode is supported by my Patreons. Shout out at the end. First question comes from Len Adams, IK of Answers. There's a chance for an M1 Pro Max Mac Pro. Will it be at the spring event or the fall event? First of all, dear God, please don't let them call it that. There's too many pros and maxes and max. Max Max. It's, it's awful. The naming, we're going to have to do a video about naming stuff, aren't we, again? Just so that Tim Apple knows what he's doing. Uh, because this is this is just not okay. Uh, did this get worse since Greg Joswiak took over marketing from Schiller? Do we need Schiller back? Regardless, if we are getting a Mac Pro with Apple Silicon over the next 12 months, uh, I don't think you've got either of the events. I think, if anything, it's going to be WWDC. That makes the most sense. It's the Mac Pro. It probably won't come out until later in the year. But that's where they'll announce it, almost certainly. Next up, again from Len Adams, IK Vances. Here's the thing with dates. M1 revealed as silicon at WWDC 2020 in June, November 10th, 2020 launch. M1 Pro and Max, October 18th, 2021. When is M2 exactly? I know it's slated for April to June. So yeah, it, it seems like April to June is kind of what some people have been saying. I still think we're looking at March. I think it's going to be the end of March that we get M2 and the remaining M1 Max Pros. It just makes sense to me that they're going to do spring event for the lower powered Max. So we basically get A15 in September. Then we get October, we get the previous generation's Pro models with the extra cores. Then six months later, halfway through um, from the September to September run, we get the M2 or the M3 or the M4. That's when that one will come, I think. And then again, we have WWDC in June, which becomes our either very high-end pro hardware or pure software events. And then we go into September where we get the next iPhone with the next generation of silicon. Then the month after we get the pro models of the uh, Max with the previous year's chips and the cycle continues. I think that's how it's gonna go. But who knows at this point, everything is all over the place because of the supply constraints. James Apple asks, do you buy this BS that your next Mac Mini isn't going to have an M1 Pro and M1 Max chip and like an M2 chip of some kind? By seeing the renders from John Prosser, I'm convinced that the Mac Mini means business and in the performance and power category. It just screams power. I'm not sure where you've seen this about it just getting an M2. It doesn't really make sense because if it was just getting the M2, they wouldn't have been keeping the Intel models around as the apparently higher end option at the moment with that lovely uh, dark gray aluminium. So I think we are going to get our pro models probably with a darker space gray looking outfit and we will get M2 in as well. But first we're going to get our pro ones because that's what we're owed and that's what we deserve as people. I am interested to, to know where you've heard that they're just going to get an M2 though. Doesn't make sense to me. Next up, Len Adams asks, I gave answers. What percentage do you think the mixed reality headset is at Q4 of 2022? And by the way, you've worded this, I'm guessing you mean what chance percentage do I think it has? I don't think we're going to see it that soon, although we're hearing that it's starting to ramp up. So if anything, I think we might get an announcement at WWDC. I don't think it's going to be announced at an event and then thrown straight out. I think we'll get an announcement that Apple is moving into AR and VR in the same way that we got the Apple Silicon uh, announcement at WWDC and then we didn't get the hardware until November. So I think it will probably be that we will get the heads up for developers. There'll be a developer transition kit that doesn't look cool at all. And then the final hardware will be released probably in the fall if it is next year. We are hearing that it's all ramping up now, so it could well be that that's when we get it. But unless they give it to developers first, that's not going to be a lot to do with it when it arrives. And again from Len Adams, IK answers, what would the ports be for the MacBook between the Air and Pro and for the MacBook SE? Again, tricky ones because A, we don't know if these products are going to exist at all, uh, but the MacBook that we've seen the leaks for, whether that is the replacement for the Air or whether it is a 
MacBook MacBook that has two USB-C ports, presumably Thunderbolt and uh, MagSafe. So that would be pretty much all you get on that one. And in terms of the MacBook SE, it would be a replacement using the same chassis as the current MacBook Air, according to our kind of guesses that we were doing yesterday. So it would be two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, no MagSafe. Itom asks, I gave answers. Do you think Apple will release soon 14 or 16 inch iPad Pro? Sure, it would help to boost productivity and multitasking and for battery life also. I'm not sure that we're going to get iPads that are bigger than what we have now. 12.9 inches seems pretty big for an iPad. Remember as well, this is a fairly thin device. It's going to go into your bag, um, probably without a case, but probably with like a sleeve or something. Um, and the bigger it gets without gaining kind of thickness, the, the less it's going to resist being bent. Um, and that's not great for a big old slab of glass. Now, if they are going to go that big, then I think we're probably going to see either stainless steel or titanium chassis. So we would be seeing those as the bands around the edges, like we have with the iPhone uh, Pros, um, with the stainless steel edges, and then glass backs, because it does look like we're going to get MagSafe-based charging on the iPads in the nearish future. Going up to 14 and 16 inches, uh, I just don't see it right now. And Robert Neighbors asks, IK answers. do you think Apple will ever put an on-off switch on the AirPods Max and the Apple Pencil? It would make use of these products way more convenient to use and buy instead of the stupid way they are now. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think they're ever going to do that. And I also don't really know why they would. So right now, the AirPods Max go into sleep mode after an hour or so if you don't put them into their cool little bra case. And I know some people really dislike this little case. Now you can do it with just a little magnet if that's what you really want to do, uh, but you're not gonna save a great deal of battery life by doing that. And it doesn't really make any difference, I would say. Now, in terms of the Apple Pencil, I can only assume you mean like the first generation one that plugs in uh, because the other one basically keeps itself charging all the time when it's stuck to the side of your iPad. And let me know in the comments, has anyone actually ever had an Apple Pencil run out of charge? I don't think it's ever happened unless it's like fallen off of your iPad in your bag or something for a couple of weeks. But the big reason that Apple doesn't put on-off switches on stuff generally, like the iPods never had an on-off switch, I don't think. They had like a little slider for turning them on. Steve Jobs, it was uh, one of the things that was mentioned in Walter Isaacson's book, um, hated the idea of an on-off button because it reminded him of death, being able to just kind of switch something off. I, d I don't know why, particularly, but uh, yeah, that was um, something that came up in his autobiography. So I would say definitely on the pencil, almost zero chance because any switch gear that you put onto stuff adds complexity. Um, it's something else to forget to do, turn it on, turn it off. Whereas if it just automatically charges and automatically sleeps and automatically keeps itself charged up, there's no real issues there. So I'm not sure what your issue is with the charging. Um, if I'm honest. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. It is Black Friday. Go and spend all your money on things that you don't really need. And speaking of things that you don't really need, I have a Patreon. Uh, thank you to all the guys over here that have uh, already supported. You guys rock. And um, we will see you in the next one. I've got a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to be out and about filming today in the real world because some of the stuff I'm unboxing needs some outdoors. 